Hi, I'm Lou and I love mini bikes. This is everything I know in about five minutes. First of all, there are three different frame sizes, the 50cc, the 100cc, and the 200cc. These are not very common, but usually have about one horsepower engine, or as in this case, an electric motor. These are the original mini bikes that have been around forever and they're about three horsepower. And these larger frames first hit the scene about 2014 and they have six horsepower. This really will depend on the rider, but typically these are good for anyone below seven years old. That's seven to 14 years old and that's 14 and above. I don't know too much about these little ones. I just have them for my smallest grandkids, but I do have one video on how to replace the batteries on these below. This one is the Motovox MBXE. Common 100cc frames include this Megamoto, Motovox, Coleman CT100, and Baja Doodlebug. Most of my interest and knowledge is in these 200cc frames. These are by far the top two sellers. This is the Coleman CT200EX, and that's the Coleman BT200X. These have the exact same engine, drivetrain, brakes, and steering column. The CT is nice for roads and smooth trails because it has a lighter, weaker frame, and it has a nice carry compartment. The BT is about five pounds heavier and has this tubing which is three times stronger than the CT and this welded gusset right here which helps where the frames usually break on the CT. The BT sits about six or seven inches taller but the ground clearance is the same on both bikes. A really good bike that I don't have in my collection is the Baja or Massimo Warrior. This is its younger brother, the MB200S, new in 2022 and it's the first affordable mini bike with full suspension, front and back. Other than the rear suspension, this bike is very much like the Coleman's. It has the same wheelbase, wheels, nearly the same engine, drivetrain, brakes, and front suspension. One small complaint I'm hearing about this bike is the seat is not as comfortable as the Coleman's or its bigger brother, Warrior. Finally, the Trailmaster is widely regarded as the king of mini bikes. It has the same engine, but a 10 inch longer wheelbase than its brothers. It has front and rear shocks like the MB, but it has hydraulic disc brakes, which give a lot more stopping power. It's sturdier and 20 pounds heavier than any of its counterparts. A set of both front and rear pegs and decorative metal panels. It has the Baja Warrior style seat, which is widely regarded as the most comfortable. Rubber engine mounts that prevent handlebar vibration common in some mini bikes. The jack shaft drivetrain on these other bikes keeps them locked in one gear. The Trailmaster has a torque converter drivetrain, which automatically shifts gears so you get both hill climbing power and a higher top end speed, much like a snowmobile or razor. This is definitely a high priced luxury mini bike and everyone, including me, says they are a dream to ride. If you don't want to lay out this kind of cash, there are simple ways to upgrade these. The video listed here shows how to put springs under this seat and make a much more comfortable ride. You can get these Baja seats for about $50 and I'm planning to put one on here. It'll require a little modification and I'll post a video. If you need more stopping power, there are kits to replace these drum brakes with those hydraulic brakes. Here's a link to a video where I take off the jack shaft and replace it with a torque converter for $60 and make it go just as fast as that one. Taking off the cover to show another option. There's the clutch, primary chain, jack shaft, and secondary chain to the back sprocket. You can remove the jack shaft, flip the clutch over so the sprocket's on the inside, and straight chain it all the way back to the back sprocket. Straight chaining is good if you only want top end speed, but it does not give you very much hill climbing torque. It will also melt cheap clutches like this, so you'll probably have to upgrade. These all have 6.5 horsepower engines, including this one according to the Massimo website, but Walmart put on this silly sticker. There are a few modifications you can do to get more power. The first is to take out this throttle lock screw here, which allows your twist handle to give you a wide open throttle down there. This video shows you how. Another is to unbolt the stock muffler here and put on a straight pipe. It looks like this gives you a little more power, but is definitely noisy. This is the air filter and carburetor, and it can be replaced with a more responsive slide carburetor. This arm is connected to a governor down inside the engine, which keeps it from going too fast and destroying itself. Some people remove the governor from inside the engine or put a zip tie here to defeat it, but that's a dangerous way to go. If you're going to remove your governor, you really should get a high-speed flywheel that won't destroy your coil, a high-speed rod that won't break and come through your engine case, and stiffer valve springs so you don't get valve float. Sometimes you can get lucky just deleting the governor, but many times you don't. I've seen it and destroyed engines myself. Here's a video that shows every part of these engines from the inside out. 
If you don't want to spend time building up your engine to get more power, you can throw more money at it and get a Predator Ghost racing engine. If you have any questions or want to learn more, please join our Mini Bike Newbies Facebook group where there are many experienced people that are happy to help. Thanks for watching.